has come. It is time to harvest all of our garlic. I've already harvested a little bit of it. We've had mixed results. We can talk about that later. <laughs> but I'm just going to pull the rest of them up. They're definitely ready and get them hanging. But first, I need to clear all of this stuff up because I'm going to move the hanger to over there, to over here, hopefully to get a little bit better airflow so they can cure more easily. picked and separate them into bundles and then I'm going to tie them together before I pick the other ones. That is the ones, they're so hard to see. That is the ones I already picked. I have to go pick all the rest now. I have all the baskets. <laughs> varieties definitely did a lot better than others and I think I'm gonna stick to the ones that did really well for next year I also think I might mix in some soft neck so that I have some good storage ability with my garlic to weigh the garlic. Taylor thinks they're gonna be 35 pounds worth. 35. 35 is his guess. I'm gonna go with 50 because I like to overestimate. <laughs> we'll see. All right, I have my little postage scale out here. Four pounds, three ounces is the smallest one. Second one is four pounds, 12 ounces. Four pounds, seven ounces. Six pounds, 15 ounces. I think this one's gotta be like seven pounds. 10 pounds, five ounces. <laughs> 10 pounds, one ounce. Okay, I just totaled it up. What's your guess now? What? <laughs> it was close to yours. 37 pounds. 37 pounds? It was, <laughs> I'm like embarrassed about this. It was 35 pounds, three ounces. <laughs> You're really good. Also, Ricky's right behind you. Oh. You wanna come outside? I'm jealous of your guessing skills. <laughs> it's a lot of garlic. I need to get this all bundled up and then hang it up here. I took the other stuff down again so I could weigh it all. Completely forgot that I had to do that. So, I have to put it all back up and up 
to put it all back up there. And yeah, I'm exhausted. I'm ready to go take a nap. <laughs> I decided to separate the garlic into three different piles based on size. And the way that I gauged that was if the garlic was the same size as store-bought garlic, smaller or larger than store-bought garlic. And the reason I wanted to do this is because I want to use the smaller ones sooner so they don't go bad in storage. Any of the larger ones that are split, which most of them are not, I will also use sooner or I will replant them. edge of the zones where you can grow soft neck or hard neck garlic and I think next year I want to try a mixture just to see which one does better because I know soft neck stores longer so we'll see. Whew, guys I am sweaty. That is more work than it looks like and it's toasty outside. Um, you can't really see them. It's not like the most aesthetic thing in the world but they're there and hopefully they'll dry pretty well. Um, I have them in small enough bundles that I'm hoping that like they're fanned out enough where we're not going to have any issues and I am going to need to keep an eye on them since there is like a ledge over here as they dry they might shrink a little bit and I might have to move them back over to this wall but for now we're going to leave them here I think they'll get better airflow this way I will have to move them again if it rains a lot because we do get like a lot of water in here and I don't have a way to keep them dry if that's the case. But that shouldn't be too hard to do. I should be able to just like pop them over to the other wall. The garlic is done. <laughs> 2023 garlic. I'm so excited to cure these. They're going to sit here for probably three or four weeks and then I'll trim them. I'm going to try and do like a faux braid with them since they are hard neck. Um, I saw this cool little tutorial for like making pretty, like the pretty garlic braids, but with hard neck. So we're going to try that and I'll show that to you guys if you want to see it. But it's done. I decided that I wanted to start working on my cottage garden a little bit this evening. And the reason is I've been wanting to do this for so long and I just haven't had a chance because the rest of the garden has really just needed my attention as much as I possibly could give it. So I decided to plant my fig tree first because it was looking a little bit sad in its pot. And then the camera died, but I was able to also get some herbs planted as well, which I'll show you those next week. Just about finished up putting these, uh, I don't know, cross supports on all of our roof joists. Um, I just have one more that I'm screwing down at the very front edge. So these are like gonna, well, they'll do a couple things, but the main reason we're putting them up is to give us something to screw our roof metal to. It wouldn't really, it'd be really difficult if we just put the roof metal on top of those joists and tried to screw like up the length of the joists and usually you would put roof metal on a roof that has like sheathing like a house you know it would have a solid sheet but we don't really have a reason to do that and two by fours are a lot cheaper and easier to put up for us so they kind of do what sheathing would too or they like stiffen up the structure a lot so every board we put on this thing it gets a lot stiffer which is nice because it was kind of wobbly to begin with <laughs> but um all right, so you're gonna finish that up and then you're gonna start putting the like straight up roof panels on it? Yeah, so after that, we'll put our drip edge on. Like I was saying earlier, we're gonna have to space it out and leave room to get our wall panel board in there that we don't have yet. Um, so we'll just kind of have to measure for that. And luckily it's a little bit flexible, so if we're an eighth of an inch off, it probably won't uh, be the end of the world. And then yeah, we'll get the roof metal up there and then we'll kind of start seeing how big we want this side overhang to be. 
looks like our wall is going to be right here basically past or screwed onto the oh, I'm sorry the wall will be here so we'll have to space it out and then determine how far we want the overhang to be basically so we don't have to trim the sides of the metal and uh, then also put like a cap trim on the sides we'll just have our cap on the front so, so roof is next and then we're gonna do the like floor of the inside of the coop the yeah. bunk bed yeah we'll do yeah we'll do the roof this weekend and uh this weekend <laughs> and then the floor joists will come next So it's going to be a little hard to visualize, but this is a four inch side over here. I think that will work. Okay, so we'll go with four. Taylor was able to get the roof done on the chicken coop this week, so next week we'll be working on putting up the floor joists and hopefully getting the floor and start closing it in. We had three solid days of absolutely pouring rain this week. So we weren't able to get a ton done, but we were able to get outside in the little pockets of time in the evening where it wasn't actually absolutely pouring. about to pick some green beans which feels 
crazy because I feel like I just planted these. They do grow really fast though. So we definitely, they do grow really fast though. We definitely have a bunch that are like ready to go. I think that's them. harvest it's not like a ton but it's probably a solid meals worth that's all I'm gonna do outside for tonight but I do have another project inside that we need to get done tonight so we're gonna go downstairs and show you what that is got around to actually coming down here last night because I don't even know I had to make dinner and I was working on cleaning up the house because our friends are coming to visit for the weekend but it's like 6 a.m. right now and I just got an email saying that our chicks and ducklings are at the post office so I need to get this set up really quick so we can go get them The reason that we're using these pine pellets instead of like the like pine bedding or the pine shavings is because I've read a few places that like this holds heat better so I'm hoping it'll keep it nice and warm and also it's really absorbent and it will hopefully last a little bit longer as far as like needing to change it out with the ducks being in there too since they like to splash water. That's my hope. <laughs> we'll see if that actually is the case. So this is the tractor supply pelletized bedding for horses. And it's, it's a 40 pound bag and it's $7. So this is actually what we use for our cat litter too. And it works really well. And it's significantly cheaper than buying cat litter. <laughs> I am gonna go fill up their water and then I'm going to come back down here with a tablespoon and some measuring cups so I can scoop them some food and get their brewer's yeast mixed in. Hi, can you please get down? You don't belong up here. three tablespoons of sugar.
one and a half tablespoons of brewer's yeast per cup of food, and this is a half teaspoon. So the reason we got two pools is because we're gonna cut a hole like in the center of that one and kind of set it on top, secure it on top, so that once they get a little bit bigger, they're not hopping out of this because it's only like a foot tall. I don't really know how big they're gonna get that fast, so <laughs> I'm sure they will get pretty big pretty fast. So that's kind of the plan. And also as little babies, it'll help keep the heat in and they'll stay warmer that way. I think they're all set up though. So as soon as the post office opens, we're gonna go get them. Hello, Chimpanzee. 